Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is checking the refrigerant charge on a R410A heat pump. Okay, it says Puron, and the heat pump right here in cooling mode is looking for 14 degrees of TXV subcooling. We're checking it with the Hillmore four valve aluminum gauge set. It has the remote temperature sensors here, they're the clamp on style. Uh, presently, we have a clamp on the liquid line and it's reading 80 degrees, and the suction line and it's reading 48.4. Now, we don't need the one on the suction line, I just have it on there just to show you the uh, temperature of that. Um, the other thing is, I have not uh, opened up these valves right here. These are king valves, so presently they're back seated. But anyway, uh, normally you would attach your gauge set, open these up, then let it run for five minutes in order to make sure that the uh, refrigerant charge is not entering below freezing on the suction line. Uh, but basically what I wanted to show you in the video is making sure that you know how to work the king valves. So presently they're back seated, which means they're all the way up. Back seated means that this suction line uh, and this indoor portion are connected, but the gauge port is not connected, okay? If this is mid-seated, which will be a few turns clockwise, then the suction line and the line entering into the outdoor unit and the port are all connected. There are no Schrader valves in the King valve setups right here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do just a few clicks right there. And you see we are reading about 125 PSIG. Same thing for the liquid line. Turn that clockwise right here. All right, there we go. So we're reading on the liquid line, 253 PSIG. Okay, so if we were to take this 253 PSIG and we bring it in to our 410A, uh, what we're looking at is the saturated temperature on the middle of this outdoor heat pump. Okay, so we're talking about the middle of the coil roughly is in saturated state and this right here, which is the, the pink or light rose inner ring, is reading about 84 degrees. Minus 80 degrees is 4 degrees of subcooling. So you remember, if your subcooling is low, lower than your rated subcooling, then that means you need to add refrigerant. All right, so remember that if you have too high of a subcooling, then that means you need to recover some refrigerant. So for instance, if the saturated temperature here was 90 uh, degrees on the light pink rose saturated temperature and this temperature right here on the liquid line say red 70 um, That's a, a very wide spread that's 20 degrees and that would be overcharged If it's calling for 14 degrees. I like to have it right around 15 16 degrees of subcooling All right, so we know we, we said that the unit is undercharged. Okay, so we actually need to add some refrigerant when we add refrigerant we need to add it as liquid into the vapor side and meter it in slowly into the suction line okay so it has to come out of the bottle as a liquid through the suction port right here and into the suction line right here so I just want to show you the temp difference uh, between using a multimeter with a small temp sensor like this versus say one that looks like this Okay, so you see the temp difference between my UEI multimeter uh, temp stat right here and this one. So we're reading 79.9 and 79.8. So this clamp setup is pretty darn accurate, okay? Uh, if it's in the sun, you know, you want to cover it up with uh, some insulation or something, uh, some Armaflex in order to make sure that the sun uh, does not affect your reading. But... The fact that this says 79.9 and that says 79.8 and I just checked this in water mixed with ice tells me that these clamps are pretty darn accurate. All right, so hopefully you can see this. We're reading 252 PSIG. You file that in and we're reading right around 83 uh, degrees right there. Okay, so that's a saturated temperature in the middle of the outdoor coil. You have 79.5. So we are at roughly 3.5 degrees of subcooling. So 3.5 degrees is a lot lower than 14 degrees of what we actually need. So that's why we need to add refrigerant to this. If you checked on the inside of the building, uh, you would not be able to have 18 to 21 degree temp difference between the return air and the supply air. But that's a confirmation check. You, just, you can check at the closest 
supply and return registers or across a coil, say, uh, where the return enters into, see, the air handler or the furnace, and on the other side, within a few feet of the evaporator coil. Okay, but that's how it's done. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.